Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode, I'm bringing you live commentary because, as promised, if I'm going to be doing something new and something I haven't tried out before, I'm going to do live commentary in this series because I want you to get the full effect of my live reactions, uh, my dismay, my horror, etc. And uh, we are going to be looking at the new space plane parts in this episode. I've decided that with uh, my ample funds and a lot of science, we can unlock those parts. And I'm just going to unlock all of them, I think, uh, is probably the best way to go. I'd rather not uh, be constrained by uh, trying to make a plane with, uh, with only partial parts. I want the full range. I especially, I, I definitely want, uh, want the real uh, turbojets. So let's, uh, it looks like we've got some wing parts here. Uh some interesting parts there there's the turbojet I definitely want that anything interesting in here ah well we've got some elevons uh, crew cabin docking port uh, well it's getting a bit tight isn't it I don't want to get the rapier yet uh, I'm going to try and test that system first and then unlock the rapier after. So what's going to happen is I'm going to test the system with the turbo jets, and then if that works out, I'll swap those out for the rapiers. If you notice, the rapiers have the same mass as the turbo jets. The max thrust uh, with the with the well, I don't know. In jet mode, it seems to have a little bit less thrust. Okay, so we're going to have to look at some buffer. It's only got 190, whereas the turbojets have 225. So I'll have to pay attention to that. But uh, let's hold off on that. Let me make sure I've got all of these. Oh, uh, the, the bicoupler will be very important, I'm sure. Uh, well, I can't unlock either of these now. Anyway, so, okay, we'll... Hold off any more of that. Let's uh, look at unlocking parts. I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I've never used this thing. Um, and I'm not going to, by the way. I did, of course, most of these parts I've never used before. But that one has appeared in the game previously, and I have no intention of using it. I'll purchase all of these. Uh, yeah, looks like I'll have to purchase. Well, I'll just give myself a selection. Hundred and I, I don't think I need that one. Okay, let's let's be more selective here. Uh, that looks useful. That looks useful. Yeah, useful. And maybe I'll just uh, try my best to create something that incorporates a lot of stuff. I love this structural pylon. That structural pylon is very helpful for extending the landing gear. Um, because sometimes landing gear is too short. Nose cone? I don't know. Uh, the adapter, probably. Okay, and then... Inline cockpit, I have ideas for. I don't know if I'll get to them in this one. Small hard points. Basic intake. Structural intake. Different types of fuel tanks. Oh, okay. I'll just unlock all of those. Okay. I think we're pretty well off on what I need here. Sometimes I use that. Yeah. Lights. Silly me. I had the the technology unlocked, but uh, yeah, research. I'll research that too. Anything else I should be re researching? Let's get those. Try couplers too. Separatrons. Okay, as you see, I, I I came in with a certain idea about what to do with these things, and I'm I'm not sure this is gonna work. I have been told that we don't need too much wing layering in order to make planes work in this uh, version with the new space plane parts. Uh, I hope that is true. 
Uh, this has numerous very interesting features. First of all, you can see cockpit, crew cabin. Again, I tried to use as much as possible. Uh, uh, the, the main concept was actually uh, what's going on here with the... These are fuel tanks here. And uh, the cargo base here. The beauty of this system is that if your load can't fit in the cargo bay, it's, it's reasonable to keep the cargo bays just open and have the load just stick out. You can see that if it's too long, it can even stick between the two tails. So there's that going for it. There is some, uh, well, unintentional and really non-functional clipping when it comes to the parachutes when the bay doors open. But yes, we have parachutes just in case. I hope they're in the right place. Uh, you can see where the center mass is. Um, it depends on how the fuel depletes, basically. Whether those parachutes are in the right place. They seem... It seems like they're uh, a little bit off, but actually I think once the fuel depletes... I've, I've had to balance the fuel a bit to get the center mass and center lift in a good position, so they're like this right now. And uh, basically I've got everything down the center is just uh, liquid fuel. And so that's just liquid fuel there, liquid fuel there. And then there's oxidizer and liquid fuel in these tanks out here. It's possible that I might consider just using turbojets here and then the rapiers on the outside. Uh, that's a thought. But right now we're just using turbojets. So docking port. And I sneakily done some uh, air intake stuff here obviously the two big ones there but also structural ones here 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 and down here filling in the gaps it's got some landing lights you can see a uh, very good landing light profile there and even uh, lights for the wings I unlocked those lights so I decided to use them uh, solar panel you can see minimal amount of solar panels right there and yeah, uh, I didn't end up uh, extending the landing gear. I hope that'll be all right. We'll see. It depends how easy it is to uh, take off of this without uh, rotating too much. And that'll depend on the lift of the wings. I do not know if the wings have enough lift. I've tried to put control surfaces wherever I could. And use these as canards. Yep. Uh, I think I want to remote control this. I don't want to risk a Kerbal on the first flight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck a Probodobodyne into the cargo bay like that. And I've got control from there. i going to leave the cargo bay open and close it on the runway. So we're going to make sure that uh, Jeb and Bill do not sneak in there. But otherwise we've got quite, room, quite some room for a crew. Alright, I think I have said all I want to say about this before it crashes into some oblivion. So let's launch. Okay, so here we are on the runway and it looks like there's some clipping of the wing underneath in the cargo bay. That's uh, interesting to note, but we're not going to deal with that right now. Let's deal with uh, the main flight mechanics of this thing. Seems like we have plenty of clearance. It's not like it's scraping anything. All right, uh, SAS is on. Throttle up. And it's just one stage, and then parachutes if necessary. Let's try and bring this back intact. Interesting effect. Looks like the destructibility of the runway causes interesting lighting effects because it's in pieces, maybe? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna rotate. Alright! Very nice. Losing speed pretty quickly though. Gear up. I'm gonna buzz the island runway. Looks like Prograde Vector is following us very closely, that's good.
The turbojets aren't very efficient at this low altitude. They get better at higher altitude. Let's see if there's some sort of functional stall speed here. Well, I took my time with this design. I think it looks good. Question is whether it'll work as a space plane. We've got lots of fuel here. But that's not necessarily sufficient here. There is no fuel line running from the outside in, so that's why you see the inner engines are both depleting their liquid fuel because they're only draining from these tanks, which is another reason why I thought of just putting rapiers on the outside instead of on all four. That'll alleviate the thrust issue as well. Okay, well we're gaining speed pretty well. It looks like it can hold its attitude up quite nicely. Let's see about a dive and a shutdown of the engines. Fully fueled, it looks okay with the engines out. Losing speed pretty quickly though. You know, I don't think I've got RCS ports on here. I need to get some RCS ports here. Of course, right now it's not in space plane mode, but I really should get that prepped up uh, for, uh, for the eventuality when I do have that happening. Okay, we're not landing, we're just uh, flying by. Very nice, so 60 meters per second is quite doable as a landing speed. Okay, now high altitude test. By the way, I named it uh, HM1 because hard mode 1, that's all. Uh, nothing else in particular. Right now, the only thing I'm worried about is landing this thing. Uh, that is going to be a little bit tricky because, again, I haven't extended the landing gear very low. So there's a high probability if I flare it or do anything like that, that I might scrape some engines off the tail or something like that. I think the wheelbase is wide enough so that it won't tip. But uh, yeah, just scraping something off the tail is the main issue. Well, I'm very happy right now, honestly. I... Well, there's a reason why I put a probe core in instead of having Kerbals, and that's because I didn't think this would uh, do quite as well as it's doing right now. These space plane, these new parts uh, sure make it a lot easier than it used to be. We are going to uh, see where this thing chokes, I think. Just gonna go to two thirds power just so I have a good benchmark. Uh, it looks like it's slowing down, so I'm actually gonna go to full power. I need some sort of benchmark to see about the intake air.
this engine is losing out. Okay, 1,000 meters per second, that's roughly Mach 3.3 .3 at 20 kilometers. We're actually gaining intake air as we lose some uh, some altitude. Okay, I think uh, I'm satisfied with this. I want to do some high-speed maneuvering now. Do not try this in far. Or deadly reentry. Uh huh. Yes, this thing does not want to maneuver much at high speeds. That's probably quite predictable. Okay. We'll have to slow down before turning around. You can see uh, it's whereas earlier when it was at slow speed, the prograde vector would follow us. It's not doing so right now because the aerodynamics are such that uh, the the wing can't push the prograde vector around like that. Okay, very nice maneuver, and we have made a decent U-turn, lost altitude. I mean, a, a decent U-turn would probably be one that doesn't lose altitude at the same time, but in this case I was trying to. I've transferred some fuel from the outside tanks back into the inside tanks here uh, for liquid fuel. Uh, you might wonder why I didn't just use the liquid fuel tanks for these. Um, instead of having both the liquid fuel and oxidizer, first of all, I wasn't sure whether I would need more uh, LFO, uh, both of them, in case of uh, trying to get to orbit. Second of all, I needed the size, but I didn't really need more liquid fuel. So I decided that uh, probably what we would be doing is uh, this, this amount of liquid fuel is enough. We really have about 400 units of liquid fuel down the center. And so, but I needed the space. I actually needed to space it out properly. So that's why I used the LFO tanks instead. And besides, uh, I think the bicoupler only comes with uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. So that was uh, already a thing. Okay, trying to get back home quickly. Still got a long ways off. See you when we get there. Okay, uh, KSC's in sight. We're sort of losing some of our... I, I've been going too fast and too high here. Losing some intake air. Let's uh, slow down a bit. Looks like we were within 100 kilometers. A very space plane -y sort of return. trying my best to turn towards uh, KSC. We're a little bit south here. I was intentionally going south because we were a little bit north. It looks like I overshot the mark. Still don't know how this thing will handle empty, but uh, it's handling well so far. Okay, so we're going to just fly straight in instead of trying to go around. Looks like uh, we decelerated quite quickly actually. This thing definitely knows how to decelerate. It's uh, got a deceptive amount of drag actually. Which when uh, re-entering the atmosphere will be a good thing. Guess I'll switch to chase view. Center mass has shifted further back, makes the plane feel a little bit different now than it did 
initially feels a bit heavier of course it isn't actually heavier it's just that the controls feel heavier feet dry 300 meters Brakes, 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 brakes. Engine shut down. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Can we taxi with this thing, do you suppose? Nah, it's, it's off. Well. Maybe a little bit of uh, token thrust will be good for... Well, this is uh, quite remarkable. This, this little plane can definitely do the trick. I think we have a candidate space plane here. Didn't even need the parachutes. Could have put Kerbals on board. Probably a good thing that we didn't though. can't believe I'm trying ground handling right now. Nah, it's not particularly good on the ground handling. Probably will need a tug of some sort to pull it in. Okay, I give up. I can't turn for some reason at this point. Alright, so let's recover vessel. We managed a point 0.1 science. Well, that wasn't the point. Uh, 98% uh, it was recovered at the SPH and it's only 98% huh that's pretty daunting okay but otherwise uh, pretty good pretty good very expensive vessel altogether so uh, we better recover it but yeah looking good alright uh, let me think about what I want to do next I don't want to I think we really need to unlock the rapiers, which means I need to figure out a way to get 204 more science. So let me take a look at that. First thing to look at, of course, is what kind of contracts we've got. And so we got plant a flag on Duna, explore Duna, explore Ike, explore Jewel, Bob, Paul. I can see doing these eventually. Okay, let's uh, get these. Might as well get the plant a flag on Ike since we're going to be exploring Ike. Plant a flag on Eve I'm going to avoid for a bit. For for quite a bit. I think I should just... Uh, well, let's not stay from Space Around Kerbin. Let's see what I haven't done in Space Around Kerbin and I'll try and uh, get some quick signs from that. Kerbin! Crew reports... Well, let's just assume that all the EVA reports have been done. Temperature scans... We own a barometer. Haven't really done any barometer scans at all. Okay, uh, let, let, let me use our new plane for some science. How about that? So I'm going to pick up the Rockamax contract and the LV-909 contract. This could be very dangerous but we'll see. And then I am going to put the Rockamax. That that was the one right? Uh, it's not the other Rockamax. Yeah. I'm gonna put one of these in the cargo bay. Let's put two, actually. Gonna put the LV-909 in the cargo bay. 
this is one of the benefits of not having the cargo bay connected to any oxidizer, by the way. And uh, we've done some temperature. Well, let's let's get scientific instruments in here too. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put the barometer and thermometer on here. Hopefully, it's properly attached. Oh, I got two of them. Okay, so hopefully everything is properly attached, and we're gonna go with uh, we'll, we'll we'll go with the probe core again this time. Let's try it out. Okay, so plenty of science to do here. Maybe, let's see. Oh no, they snuck in. Okay, Jib and Bill, you better not do anything stupid. Uh, let's if they snuck in, they snuck in. We'll just have to deal with it. Uh, let's let's put on the brakes for a sec and what I need to do is have I ever done a goo container on the runway uh, it's not worth it anyway and probably the science junior isn't worth it but log temperature we might as well get that no calm <laughs> okay uh, well not uh, not that uh, recover vessel Okay, this time I definitively kicked the duel out and of course added an antenna. I decided to add one right there. Okay, as I was saying... Temperature scan from the runway. Okay, well now it's worth zero. How about uh, pressure data? Okay, let's transmit that now. Okay, just 1.1 signs, but hey, you can't uh, complain. All right, uh, and really, definitely not worth it. Okay. Uh, should we close it all? Maybe not. Let's not close those. Take a good look at our requirements. It looks like we gotta be doing the LV909 test first. So that's the LV-909. All right, so we're uh, heading up uh, with the open cargo bay this time. Still gonna rotate at 90. Careful, careful. Gear up. Any value to doing a barometer scan right now? Yeah, sure. Oh, I better remember. Uh, right now, the solar panels are blocked by the cargo bay. Okay. I mean, this is trivial amounts of science, of course, but at least it gives us a chance to test this plane as a science platform. Okay, LV-909 test, and I'll have my cursor on it to deactivate. Shut down. That test is done. Next, Rocco Max 2477. Headed up for that. Might as well turn around and... Uh, do it on the on the 27 leg we'll try and land on the runway coming from the opposite direction this time 
trying to hit 430 is going to be interesting. Might have to put it into a dive. Okay, vomit comet time. Not quite, I know, but you get the picture. Okay. Okay, test fulfilled. And how about the thermometer reading? Probably not. Oh, grasslands, okay. Transmit that data. Let's do some flying. I think uh, we should be able to get uh, highlands and mountains as well. Highlands. Mountains, there we go. Okay, I think, uh, well, we've got an extra goo container that we didn't use, but it's just in flight over Kerbin, so we can't do anything with it. Let me just close everything up now. Should have just kept the science junior data instead of transmitting in re retrospect, but that's fine. We fulfilled two contracts with this plane. Doesn't really cover the cost of the plane though. This thing is pretty expensive. Uh, how much did we get out of it? Just 4,000 here and uh, trivial 500 or so. Yeah, I mean, uh, this plane costs like 20 times that. But we're not actually losing the money on the plane, so that's good. Hopefully. I better better put a caveat in there right now because uh, I haven't landed it yet. Really ought to put a flag on either end of the runway. So in the next episode, what I'm going to do is try and do some science. I'll go back to uh, post-commentary because I'm going to be just uh, trying to plug away getting the science I need to unlock the rapier engines and uh, fulfill some contracts, probably interplanetary missions, and it's best to do those post-commentary since they take a long time. Coming in a little bit high and, well just high, to uh, runway 9 here. Okay, brakes. Okay, I won't try and taxi off because that tr it turns out that that gives less value. <laughs> if you try and taxi it to the SPH, that's actually less valuable than recovering it to the r on the runway. I think that's a flaw there. But I recall we have one goo container left. So let's just do that on the runway. Okay, and we'll keep data there. Alright, so uh, it's just been a special space plane episode of... Uh, of this uh, hard mode series, hard times series, and uh, I hope you didn't mind the live commentary. It turned out that we didn't have any explosions or anything like that, so uh, my live commentary wasn't quite as exciting as it could have been, uh, but I had no way of knowing that uh, it would work out so well, so 
so yeah, uh, next time I think we'll be definitely going back to post commentary because and and knowing my luck, I'll probably end up having plenty of explosions that would have been worthwhile to hear my my expressions on. But uh, there you are. Um, yeah, uh, so this is called the HM1 run right now, uh, and I am up for any suggestions about a name. I haven't come up with one yet, haven't even thought about it. So uh, if you would like to uh, contribute an appropriate name, please, uh, please feel free to do so. It should be interesting. And uh, otherwise, I'll try and think up one. Uh, obviously, I didn't want to name it anything special until I knew that it worked. And worked is a little bit premature. We still haven't tested it with the rapiers and seen whether it can make it into orbit. It, it might turn out that uh, I do not have enough fuel, and so this uh, tight little design is completely futile. <laughs> I have not calculated whether this has enough delta v to get into orbit. So could be could be a problem. Could be interesting. We'll see. All right, uh, but next time, trying to unlock the rate beer, doing some science. All right, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.